Okay, let's see what this uh, big brain atheist has to say. The holy book for Christians. It's also the best tool atheists have to turn people away from Christianity. I mean, when you think of all the contradictions in the Bible and all the stories of rape and murder, or the story of how God wanted Abraham to kill his son Isaac as a sacrifice in order to show his devotion, it's kind of horrifying that so many people take this book seriously. It's not a good book by any stretch of the imagination. And why do so many Christians take that book seriously? Well, a lot of them haven't actually read it. And a lot of them have only heard the sanitized version. <sighs> A book? No, it's a codice. It's it's two codices or two libraries of various books, some court chronicles, uh, some songs, some poetry, uh, some prophecies, and then with and some the the theodicies. And then, uh, and Proverbs, and then with the New Testament, it is for bios, um, v uh, varied epistles, an apocalypse, and a few encyclicals. And the bios, known as the Gospels according to Matthew, according to Mark, according to Luke, according to John, um, were written by groups that disagreed with each other. In fact, Matthew... Um, took the Gospel of Mark and basically turned Jesus into a Jewish supremacist and then added Q and a virgin birth. Um, and then Luke saw what these Judaizers had done and fixed um, the, uh, the, the Jewish supremacy and returned these sayings to the original form they were in Mark where, you know, Jews and, Jews and Gentiles are both welcome. And the writer of Luke added a virgin birth to compete with Matthew and um, added a lot more of Q. <laughs> and then John, which is from a second se separate lineage, um, is at the end. So the two earliest gospel traditions are Mark and John. Neither of them have a virgin birth. Both of them called Jesus the son of Joseph. Um, Mary doesn't seem to believe Jesus is special and his brothers and sisters think he's crazy and he's referred to as a Samaritan a lot of times. Oh yeah, and there's no resurrection in the Gospel of Mark. So, no, you're... And as for the genocide, just because a genocide gets described in a court chronicle doesn't mean God commanded it. Not to mention there's two different creation accounts in the first two chapters, not to mention there are six different creation accounts in the Old Testament. So I'm thinking you have not read the Bible or studied it because you don't read the Bible like it's a novel. You study it. Um, I studied uh, textual criticism at the college level. Um, yeah. So... I don't believe the Bible is inerrant, and the early Christianity is not based on the Bible at all. The Christians wrote, edited, and compiled the Bible, and it didn't. the New Testament didn't take its current form until about 400 years after the start of the Christian church, so... ...versions of those stories. And some Christians have just rationalized away all the crazy stuff that's in there. I mean, we hear that last one all the time. Like, oh, don't worry about that genocide. It's in the Old Testament. If Richard Dawkins did this... Yeah, don't worry about that genocide. It's in the Old Testament because it's not something that God commands any of the believers to do. And who is this genocide upon? Upon a group of people that were sacrificing infants and had human sacrifice... And, uh, you know, had sex with their daughters and all sorts of evil shit. Um, and, were, and you know what? The, the genocide actually never happened because these the Amalekites keep harassing them. So the genocide never was... There was no genocide. It was never completed. It was just regular warfare. Stuff that God commands people to do in the Bible, we atheists would never hear the end of it. But if you actually read the book... 
There's a good chance. Again, the Bible is not a book. And which Bible? The Bible of the Eastern Orthodox? The Bible of the Oriental Orthodox? The Bible of the Ethiopic Orthodox? The Bible of the Armenian Orthodox? The Bible of the Protestants? The Bible of Martin Luther? Or the Bible of the Roman Catholic Church? Because they contain different, different works. Um, and in the East, the Apocalypse of John is never read. Yes, you're not going to finish it without becoming an atheist if you aren't one already. No, if you believe that it is the inerrant word of God, which no Christian ever believed until about less than a thousand years ago. So for the first 1,200 years, nobody considered it inerrant. It's blatantly not. The only thing that was inerrant was the teaching of the church. So as long as the New Testament was being read and interpreted by the church, that's what made it inerrant, not... I mean, Satan uses it. Satan uses scripture within the text of the Bible, for God's sake. It helps that the opening chapter of the book is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, God creates light on day one, but forgets to make the sun until day four. I have said this multiple times. Clement of Alexandria, who lived in the second century talks about this. That's the first creation account. He said, imagine if somebody were to take this literally, where he's challenging the Gnostics who actually took that literally. He said, it's obviously not literally, it's metaphorical. And this is what all the early Christians taught and believed. It's only within the last 300 years that it's being approached as a science book by you pompous Americans. There's also a talking snake. And No, there's not. What you get, you, you Anglo-Americans translate as snake, is actually a winged, glowing being, of fire. <laughs> Good God. The idea that all the evil we see in the world happened because someone decided to eat an apple. First of all, it wasn't an apple, and two, no, that's not what happened. Are you are you kidding me? Do you think that the Bible actually? I mean, even if you take the Bible super literally, Adam and Eve weren't the first people. They have two sons, and one of them dies, and Cain goes off to the city of Nod to take a wife, and then they have Seth and then a bunch of other sons who all who take wives from different places. Adam and Eve weren't the first people on earth, for God's sake. You don't have to read very far into the Bible before the warning alarms start going off in your head. What's scary is that a lot of Christians don't see the book as a metaphor or as a collection of stories. No, most Christians do. It's only evangelical Protestant Americans in modern day and atheists that view it as, you know, an infallible book that can be read like a novel. They take the book literally. They... You take the book literally. You've proved by what you said that you think the book should be taken literally. You really think Adam and Eve are our distant ancestors. I mean, that's how deluded they are. They may be for some people, but they're not the, the progenitors of the entire human race, and they're clearly metaphorical. But if you want to believe them as literal as you do, fine. Yeah. I mean, no one should believe this stuff. And it doesn't get any better in the New Testament. I mean, just look at the miracles of Jesus. Uh, walking on water, healing a paralytic man, feeding the multitudes with a very limited amount of food, coming back from the dead. I mean, it's unreal. Literally, it's unreal. It didn't happen. I mean, if anyone said, oh yeah, I did that exact same thing today, we would just say, no, you didn't. We hmm, I guess that's why, you know, the uh, Pharisees wanted to execute him for sorcery. Why didn't the Jews and the Romans just say, no, you, you didn't do that stuff? Um, now, I don't necessarily believe that the miracles, you know, happen the way they said they did. But sometimes weird shit just happens. Um, it's actually not that strange to have odd things happen. But I'll continue in part two.